Hi, welcome to Nagish Biology Online Classes. Those who have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, like and share to your friends. Let's discuss a topic that is a seed. The seed is formed at the end of the sexual reproduction. So what we can say it is end product that is formed in all angiosperms after reproduction. So end product of the sexual reproduction that is seed. So but here the how seeds are formed. Seeds are formed because of ovules. The ovule converts into seed. But here the how seeds are formed. So that is because of ovules. But whereas seeds are formed inside the fruit. But here the fruit how it is formed because of ovary. Whatever part is there in the carpel or pistil. That is ovary. After fertilization ovary converts into fruit. But here the seeds are formed inside the fruit only. But here the seeds number that is not fixed. So depending upon ovules we can expect a number of seeds in the fruit. So in addition that here the integuments of the ovule. Integuments of the ovule. They are modified into outer and inner layers of the seed. Once you will see integuments of the ovule. Outer integument converts into outer layer of the seed. But whereas inner integument converts into inner layer of the seed. So just in the seed easily can observe two layers. So this is a test. It is formed because of outer integument of the ovule. So tegment here one more layer will be there in the seed that is inner layer. The tegment inner layer is formed from inner integument of the ovule. So every seed it consists of the, the well developed structure that is called embryo. The ploidy of the embryo to a diploid. That embryo consists of one uh, important structure that is called embryonal axis. So but seeds also have small minute apertures or pores. This pore is called seed pore. Seed pore is formed from micropyle of the ovule. But here the embryos are two different types. The dicot embryo consists two cotyledons, but whereas monocot embryo consists one single cotyledon. Depending upon type of seed, you can observe either monocot embryo or dicot embryo. If the seed is dicot seed, that consists dicot embryo. If the seed is monocot seed, then you can observe inside that single cotyledon consisting embryo that is so monocot embryo. But all the seeds after maturation, so they enter into the, the sometime in inactivity period that is called dormancy. But here the after maturation of the seed, seeds they may consist endosperm or may not. But here presence and absence of endosperm, seeds are broadly divided into two types. Matured seeds broadly divided into two types based on presence and absence of endosperm. So the first category endospermic seeds. They are also called albuminous seeds. So what you can observe after maturation of the seed they consist of some amount of endosperm. If the endosperm found inside the seed, after maturation of the seed, such type of seeds are called endospermic seeds. The examples for endospermic seeds, so rice, wheat, maize, 
castor coconut like this the many examples you can discuss for endospermic seeds all these seeds after maturation they consist some amount of endosperm second type of seeds non endospermic seeds they are otherwise known as ex albuminous seeds but here after maturation of the seed the seeds they do not consist endosperm that endosperm completely consumed by developing after maturity of the seed we cannot observe endosperm at maturity you can't find even single cell of the endosperm because it is non endospermic seed so completely consumed so of if you will not find endosperm after maturation of the seed such type of seeds are called non endospermic seeds example for non endospermic seeds pea next bean the like this the many phages members we can discuss after maturation we cannot find endosperm so and one more the special seeds are there that is a perispermic seed but here the how perisperm form what is the ploidy of perisperm that is a very important so perispermic seeds if the seed consist perisperm such type of seeds are called perispermic seeds so perisperm it is a remnant of nucellus so perisperm it is formed from nucellus only if the seeds consist of perisperm such type of seeds are called perispermic seeds remnant of nucellus that is called perisperm nucellus ploidy to n perisperm ploidy also to n because whatever ploidy will be for nucellus same ploidy will be for perisperm also but here the nucellus usually it is consumed by developing endosperm and as well as developing embryo but still in some plants the developing embryo and endosperm do not consume complete nucellus such type if the nucellus found some amount in the seed after maturation that is called as perisperm so best example where you can find the perisperm black pepper and as well as beets so the beet seeds and the black pepper seeds after maturation they consist of some amount of perisperm the matured seeds the what happens at the time of maturation the total water content is reduced up to how much level water content reduced so once in the matured seed will if you see 10 to 15 percent is of moisture will be there for its mass so 10 to 15 percent is of moisture only will be there in the dry seeds so but here the gradually the whenever water content reduced in the seed then so metabolic activities of the seed are metabolic activities of the embryo that will slow down then total entire seed it enters into the so one stage that is inactive stage that is called dormancy so the dormancy period seeds usually they do not germinate but radical plumule development under control of favorable conditions now the seed if it is in the dormant period dormancy stage so dormancy stage nothing but resting period so why seeds will be the resting period because of reducing water level so metabolic activities slow down whenever the favorable conditions are available like water 
the sufficient amount of water so next temperature next oxygen whenever all these favorable conditions available to the seed now seed germinates develops the root and as well as shoot but here the all favorable conditions are needed for germination of the seed now we will see the types of fruits but here the fruits are broadly divided into two types the first category that is false fruits second category true fruits the what is the major difference if the fruit is found other than bavari fruit is formed due to other than bavari such type of fruits are called false fruit actually in the majority of plants the fruits are formed because of bavari such type of fruits are true fruits but other than bavari so other than bavari means thalamus or pedicel these parts responsible to form a fruit such type of fruits are called false fruits example you will see here strawberry fruit that is false fruit whatever edible part will be there in the strawberry that is a false fruit next apple and cashew nut cashew but all these are the well known examples for false fruit once you will see in the apple scientific name of apple pyrus malus but in the apple whatever part edible that is developed because of thalamus that is the swollen end of the pedicel basal part of the floral parts there will be thalamus will be there that is also called torus but here in the apple thalamus that develops into edible part so whatever we eat in the apple that is completely thalamus that is not developed from the ovary once you will cut the apple so at the middle we can find one hard cartilaginous structure one hard portion we can observe in the apple that is true fruit that is not tasty that do not store the food material so here edible part of the apple that is thalamus so thalamus it is other than bavari so such type of fruits are called false fruits so but here the true fruits again broadly divided into two different types based on nature of fruit wall that is the fruit wall is called pericarp based on the nature of pericarp so fruits are broadly true fruits are broadly divided into two types that is a fleshy fruits second type fruits they are called dry fruits but here the fleshy fruits they their pericarp differentiated into epicarp mesocarp endocarp here the all fleshy fruits the fruit wall that is pericarp differentiated into epicarp middle layer mesocar inner layer inner part that is endocar so all these three layers you can observe in fleshy fruits but these three layers these are the parts of the pericarp so pericarp is fruit wall differentiated into three layers in fleshy fruits so you can observe many uh, fruits the examples for fleshy fruits many examples are there guava fruit tomato fruit next to coconut like this the different examples we can discuss for fleshy fruits but once you will see dry fruit pericarp not differentiated into three layers the fruit wall single fruit wall will be there we cannot uh, dis, we cannot observe like this three differentiating la layers in dry fruits so example datura and cotton next uh, groundnut all these are the well known examples for 
dry fruits but here pericarp not differentiated into like this